Happy Halloween, rotters! And welcome back to Bollywood, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best and worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. If this is your first time listening to Brain Rot, firstly, you're late! And secondly, welcome. In this podcast, I force a different guest each week to watch and discuss a trashy 80s horror film. You don't have to watch the movie beforehand, as we'll be giving you the lowdown, but if you're feeling masochistic, by all means, go out and seek the movies and join us in the trash heap. Before we crack on with the main show, it's time for some shout-outs. A big was up and thank you to Andrew Coker, Jessica Pear, Tetzel, Richard Bland, Jack Molitor, Sam Dawson, Christina Dorberg-Newman, Rob Smith, and Lauren B. All of these wonderful people recently signed up to the Brain Rot Patreon, where they get regular bonus content, including exclusive episodes, essays, and franchise retrospectives, and more. If you'd like to join them, just hit the Patreon link in the episode notes. As it's Halloween, I couldn't possibly cover a film not set on this glorious day, and so I've opted for the lesser known, baffling, and often uncomfortable and unintentionally hilarious Hack O' Lantern from 1988, directed by Jack Mundra and from the mind of Dave Eisenstark of Creepazoids fame. This slasher trashed a piece, apparently based on a true story, <laughs> maintains a level of what the fuck throughout and features a killer soundtrack. Joining me to exhume this movie is singer songwriter, podcaster, and lockdown superstar Sophie Ellis Baxter. We talk our way through the movie and then at the end of the episode have a chat about the horror genre in general. It was an honour to have her on the show and she was such a good sport for taking one for the team and watching this movie. Sophie Ellis Baxter, happy Halloween. (laughs) Happy Halloween. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. This is my season, so I'm I'm always in a good mood for this couple of months. And then it's it's my birthday and Christmas, so this time of year. When's your birthday? my jam. November 8th. Oh, oh, the 8th? Oh, that's not for long away at all. No. That's good. Yeah. I mean, the, the 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 more birthdays I have, the less exciting they are. So I, I don't <laughs> tend to do too much around them. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you, A, for watching Hack O' Lantern. <laughs> and uh, and more, more on that shortly. But mainly um, for your contribution to lockdown entertainment, because your your weekly, your kitchen disco concerts were just unfiltered joy and oh, in a really you. joyless period and um <laughs> clearly I wasn't the only one uh, to love it because it became a nationwide sensation and it brought so many smiles to so many homes did you expect it would take off the way it did oh my goodness no and even now it feels very strange because obviously um I could see that there was an online community but it was still very abstract so when it mm-hmm. takes on like an actual person like you, you think, oh my gosh, that's a very strange idea that you're watching any of that really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was quite, um, I think it was just like a necessary thing I needed to do just to release some tension. And it was really good for like Richard and I as a, a welcome distraction. And as you say, just to do something a bit silly when there wasn't a lot of silliness going on. But yeah, yeah. also a very strange little chapter of our lives I think. I could totally relate to that because I started this as well I started this podcast uh, beginning of 2020 to just try and bring some joy and do yeah. something and as you say you put things out into the world and it's not until you get a response that you suddenly realise it's hitting people and it's actually going Very beyond true. the screen yeah and, and when I get emails from people saying oh I love this episode or that it just it, it brings it home that actually it is going into other people's ears because yeah, yeah, you never yeah. really know. It's wonderful. So true. It's wonderful. And yeah. uh, and you've even been you've been touring with um with that idea with the kitchen disco, right? And are we expecting a, a live album from the uh, the London Palladium? Yeah, from, that's right. Yeah, so I mean, sort of halfway through um, lockdown, really, Richard and I thought, oh, I think we have to do this as what we do. I think you know, like a lot of people, the first half of lockdown, we thought, oh, life is just on pause, and then we'll unpause. Yeah. And then we thought, actually, no, I kind of want to involve the kitchen disco and what we do going forward. So we've sort of been touring it this year. Um, yeah. And obviously a kitchen disco, if you're not in a kitchen, is just, it's just a party, right? <laughs> it's a disco. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so basically it's sort of doing all the gigs and stuff I was doing before, but the whole spirit of it is just to have lots yeah. of fun and keep it really upbeat and like a party. So it's been really, really amazing. Yeah, tour and summer. And yes, we're doing this live album from the Palladium. 
which um mm. as you know is such a beautiful venue so yeah it's quite special to be able to do something like that as well that's amazing uh so that brings me on to halloween um mm. do you as a season as an event do you embrace it do you do anything special with the family or the kids yeah halloween's a big deal in our house um we really love halloween and in fact only this morning we were talking about what outfits we're all going to wear right. i can't decide between i might i'm either going to be um Wicked Witch of the West or Maleficent because both of them are pretty fierce. I think I'm going to go Wicked Witch of the West because I quite like the idea of being green. So yeah, I might be green. Go for it. Um, my youngest yeah, nice. loves yeah. My youngest loves Wizard of Oz, so I think that could be quite mm-hmm. fun. Um, but yeah, it's it's just yeah a lot of dressing up. We've got a massive bag of dressing up clothes. We've got stuff in the attic that we bring down with all spooky stuff we put around the house and obviously go trick or treating. Which is funny because I wasn't really allowed to as a kid, but now I make sure we do it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, actually. It's funny because where I grew up on the Wirral, which is this sort of nice, sort of quiet mm. peninsula in Merseyside, it was it was a huge thing. And I think mainly because it was a nice suburban area and there was a yeah. real community vibe in the town. And so, you know, the streets were just littered with pumpkins and hordes of kids in costumes, you know, scuttling around. But I don't see it much now that I live really in the city. Uh, and yeah. I understand why. And, you know, actually, to be fair, because I live in a, like, a nice apartment block, if kids came knocking on my door I think I'd be a bit perturbed but um yeah I do miss it though I I suppose if I had kids I'd probably go more full out the thing is at work we have um we have a competition we have a dress-up competition and I have to do it full out and if it's not pre-planned and it's not done to a t then I do absolutely nothing because well because I'm competitive and I have to win yeah so, yeah but I do think it makes a difference geographically where you are how you embrace Halloween, but it's nice to hear that, yeah, that's still going on. Oh, we do it. What's your outfit then this year? I want to know what you're going for. Well, I wanted to redo one I did quite a while ago, which was um, a circus barker with the top hat and stuff, but he's been horribly shot <laughs> all over. But I did it quite basically about six years ago, but it was good and it had it was potential. So um, yeah. I think I'm going to redo that, like, like, you know, that. like yeah. some artists re recording their songs. Um, <laughs> so when I approached you about coming on the show, you said to me you had me at horror. And mm. um, I don't know why, but it still surprises me when people say they like horror. I think because because I grew up in the 80s and 90s, horror was a bit of a dirty word because of the video nasties and films were getting banned left, right and centre. But of course, it is one of the biggest box office pulls. And so I shouldn't be that surprised when I meet horror lovers in the wild. What is your relationship then with horror as a genre? Well, first of all, I think there might be a little bit of semantics involved because this is a conversation we've had in our house a few times, actually, about Mm. what constitutes, when when is a horror a horror and when is it a thriller... Um, because psychological thriller exactly those, yeah. because there's a crossover because some things that I some films I really love people might say oh that I don't know if that's horror I mean I love things <laughs> right. like you know so like for example Rosemary's Baby Don't Look Now mm-hmm. Jaws those are all in my top five films of all time yeah it's funny because those that was when horror was it wasn't horror wasn't a dirty word in the 70s before the vhs boom yeah. and so you had all these you had oscar winning you know like the exorcist and jaws and yeah. rosemary's baby and um it was a respected genre and then the 80s kind of killed that because of all the <laughs> trash well we'll be we'll be talking yes, about some of which that which we weighed um, right into do you remember do you remember when you were younger do you know uh, did do you remember sort of your first horror or when you realized you kind of liked that feeling the first really scary film that I saw um, was basically I was watching a film with my dad and he said oh don't watch what's on after this it's a really scary film and then he fell asleep (laughs) while we were watching the first movie so I just stayed and watched the second and it was The Vanishing which I know isn't classic Mm. horror because it's not gory but it's very scary and got an amazing atmosphere and this is the Dutch one that I I watched as well and I think I must have probably been about I'm going to say I was, I, was, I was definitely way too young. So I was probably about 10. Um, yeah. And I was completely fascinated by it. And I think, actually, a friend of mine called Andy Nyman, who uh, is a magician. Mm. And uh, he also, yeah, so he, he also loves horror. And um, his, his wife once said to my little boy, who was a bit scared watching a panto, she said, isn't it nice to be scared when you know really that you're safe? And I think that might be the crux of what I like about horror. I think people have taken a long time to build a world and an atmosphere that is in, it will in, make you evoke all of that in you, but you know really that you're safe because you're just watching it. So you're once removed. Yeah. 
And it's something a bit delicious about that, I think. Yeah, I think that's per- uh, that's a brilliant way to describe it, actually. And either you get that or you don't. And I think mm. that's what creates people who like horror and people who don't. And I think yeah. it often is, you know, some sort of gateway film when you're young, when you watch, you're not meant to watch it. And it either absolutely puts you off for life or gives you a thirst for more. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're one of those people. Definitely. Uh, so today... <laughs> We're going to be talking a little bit about 1988's Hacko Lantern, yes. also known as The Damning. Uh, it's an interesting little film. Um, what are your general thoughts on this one? Well, um, <laughs> firstly, thank you. I mean, when I was first watching, I was thinking, isn't it lovely that all these people who aren't very good at acting have been given a job? That's, that was one of my first thoughts. Yes. Uh, that's and a, then that's I reali- a positive. Then I realised one of the guys... Uh, he was actually in like Blade Runner. He's like quite a, you know, right. successful, like has his own Wikipedia page actor. Mm-hmm. This was his last ever movie. And he plays a very integral role. And I thought he was pretty awful um, yeah. in it. <laughs> and it's it's a bit horror and it's a bit soft porn, isn't it? Really? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, this, I thought I'd seen this before, um, but I realise I've only seen clips. But when I was watching it, I realised I... I definitely haven't seen this before yeah. um so i've i've uh, put together a little synopsis for anyone who hasn't <laughs> seen it and i uh, hope this gives a clear rundown of what you can expect mm. so meet the drindle family a family with an extraordinary lack of boundaries after the disowned patriarch of the family grandpa a panto villain with an insatiable appetite for incest gives his grandson tommy a keepsake in the form of a pentagram pendant the emblem of grandpa's branding barn cult well, i don't know what i wrote there um once Tommy is of age and performing in full six-minute fantasy music videos, Grandpa sets out on a mission to bestow the evil powers of the cult unto him and have him take his rightful place as chief devil mask person. Sadly, anyone who gets in the way of the plan meets their demise with a farming implement, and it all comes to a head at the Halloween party with a stripper entertaining inside and a stand-up comedian entertaining the queue yeah, outside. That was very weird. <laughs> Fucking weird. And people being killed by classic weapons such as a tight corset and shovels mm-hmm. um, a final showdown leaves grandpa dead in the middle of the party I guess you could call it murder on the dance floor oh very good thank you I had to I had to get one in <laughs> come on uh, wow what a film though this yeah. um, the opening we sort of meet the little boy Tommy and mm-hmm. his grandpa now this character of the grandpa it's kind of like he's kind of like a, a very strange sort of Liberace camp character and um, what did you think of him Bit very, unnerving. he's very predatory as well isn't he um <laughs> yes. he doesn't yeah he invades a lot of personal space and seems to enjoy uh having people react to him in a very repulsed fashion he doesn't want and he's yes. not bothered about making anyone like him um no, no, I mean, even true. Tommy that he's obsessed with <laughs> little Tommy yes. um and yeah th- th- this horrible thing of him with the scene where he's you realize that actually he you know, got fruity with his own daughter when she's in a wedding dress. Yes. I mean, it's all pretty horrible. But there's, as you say, like a sort of, there's all these sort of rock fantasy sequences as well. So the scene where we see that happening could also be like a scene from like a meatloaf video or something. Completely. Um, <laughs> it's a full, a full music video though. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, the grandpa, we found out he's ousted from the family. Mm. But since he's not in jail, I was quite surprised to find out the reason he's been forced out of the family is because he forced himself onto his own daughter mm. at her wedding day and got her pregnant. Yeah. Um, when has this ever been entertaining narrative? I, I, yeah, it's I it's dealt with so casually without comeuppance. It's absolutely bizarre. But there's a lot really of idiot. that, isn't there? There's a lot of very casual. I mean, there's another yeah. scene where one girl discovers her boyfriend has been brutally <laughs> murdered and she still goes to the party. <laughs> You know, yes, she's she like, oh, that's really upsetting, but I, I better fix my makeup and keep on with the night. Yes. So no one really gets very upset about very much, actually. No. They move on pretty quick. The family's <laughs> a little bit dodgy. But yeah, Tommy, when he's all grown up um, with oh, his yeah. pendant and all that, um, he's intense because there's a wonderful moment when we realise he's... Well, I think we realise he's evil because when he's a kid, he says he likes the taste of blood. Yeah. But also when he removes his sunglasses and he breaks the fourth wall, did you notice that and looks directly at the camera? Was that in one of the uh, like one of the workout scenes? No, it's when he's done like the weird sign with his yes. grandpa and then yes. he just turns and looks at the camera. Oh, right at the beginning, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. When Yeah, with the pumpkins and all that. Yeah, yeah. That's not a great business, clearly, because he's no. always got a full truck of pumpkins. It's... <laughs> 
I've noticed that too. He's never without all the pumpkins. Yeah, yeah it's... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there's more, though, it's not just the granddad because Vera, the daughter, when we meet her mm-hmm. when she's older, she's she's in the bath. And um, yeah, this is when you realise the whole family has an uncomfortable lack of modesty because she, the door is wide open and yeah. she's not six, you know, you know, when you're told to keep the door open because of risk of drowning. So it's for safety. But she's she's a fully formed young lady and oh, she's yeah. exposed. She's 18. Yeah. And just yeah. leaves it really wide open for everyone. And it just even that doesn't doesn't sit right with me. Well, this is the soft porn element. And then the girlfriend yeah. comes in and then yeah. she like helps her get out the bath and get her little robe on. Yes, completely. Yeah. And even when and when the friend says that she likes Vera's brother, Roger. Yes. Vera says something like, oh, is this about to get, you know, illegal? And I'm like, is she inferring <laughs> that the three of them might get get it, get on? And it's just, oh, it's just horrible. I know. I, felt, I think if some if there'd been some boundaries, I think I would have felt a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Just from someone, just one person. Yeah, just one of them, please. <laughs> I mean, just one. I was going to say, when Roger gets together, what's the friend called? It's not Kathy, is it? Um, Vera um, and Beth, I want to say. Beth, okay. So when, when they get together, yeah, Beth sounds right. Um, and then Vera goes, so where did you get it on with my brother? Oh, my and so God. she takes her to the place where they <laughs> just had sex. Yes. It's really, which is on a, on a, next to a gravestone. Yeah. It's, it's just odd. Yeah, she literally points and goes... She takes her and goes, right there, that's where I just yeah. had sex with your brother. And she's like, oh. Yeah. She's like, oh, interesting choice. Why? <laughs> Why would you want to know? What did you think, though, of the music video? Because it is, that is really something, isn't it? It's, I, I love, I yes. when I was watching it, I was thinking, I wonder what Sophie's thinking at this point. Because it's it, it's full on, and it's a bit on the nose, because the, the chorus is, you're the devil's son. You're the devil's son. Yes, exactly, you're the devil's son, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, the music was quite a big, you know, it's like an extra character in the whole movie, though, yeah. wasn't it? The music is takes a lot of it. Um, yeah, all of that, but it was so fitting. You kind of, you weren't, I think, you know, because of the whole mood of it, you weren't that shocked no, true. when it turned into a rock, rocky video, yeah, with a, sort of spinal tap With a moment. sort of a scantily clad <laughs> cave girl shooting lasers from her eyes. And yeah. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, and the pitchfork. Yeah, of course. Pitch yeah, fork in the neck. Nice. Yeah. Get that moment. <laughs> um, there, now, I got very, very confused. There's one of Tommy's friends is a girl called Nora. Um, mm-hmm. And she has the pentagram yeah. tattoo on her bum. Now, I got confused because yeah. we learn later that that's actually branding from the cult. Because another girl gets branded yeah. the same way. So is she part of the cult? Then why does she get Why killed? is the grandpa yes, upset? I don't know. Uh, yeah, you're right. It, I don't... But then, no, but hang on a minute. It wasn't... She didn't get killed by Grandpa, did she? Well, I don't it know. Was, was it Tommy? No, it's, um... It's like, you, I don't know, it's, it's like the big twist at the end, isn't it? Oh, the mum. But the one with the... Yeah, the mum. It's all been the mum. So the mum was doing that because she didn't like Tommy hanging out with people. I didn't so she kept pick, pick, picking everybody off that was getting anywhere near Oh, my kids. God. Now, then now I love this. That's so clever. I only just... I just thought at the end she donned it quickly. But yeah, that makes no, so no, much sense. No, 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 she's the one the whole way through. She's all, it's always oh been the mum. Oh my god. I completely she said, missed I just the wanted the family to be <laughs> she said, I just wanted the family to be together. I just wanted to keep us together. Wow. And Tommy's like, I love you, mum. Yeah. She did it like she was being overly protective. It's one of those. And I like as well. Oh, this is another bit where they're casual. <laughs> because right at the beginning, the the dad, the husband, yeah. he's killed. Of course. But he's yes. killed on Halloween. <laughs> yes. And then like 10 years later, Vera, with the best friend, she's like, oh, my mum. She always gets down on this day because dad died. I mean, <laughs> we she's should still get over, over it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a decade on. Like, why is she still sad about that? About the 10 murder. 10 years ago now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. About the murder of her husband. Yeah. What's the limit yeah. on grief? <laughs> Jesus. I know. Um, I quite, what did you think of this, um, the killer's outfit? Because it's this sort of red and black coat with a double horn devil mask. I, I, the thing is, we see later wow. that the cult all have this mask so i'd love to know where they had it manufactured because the idea of a cult waiting for order fulfillment is really wonderful <laughs> yeah that's good also i just feel like it's a classic isn't it yeah the person in, in the mask and everybody goes oh it must be you right ha ha you look great and then <clears throat> killer it's you know we we've seen this it works yeah i love that she's 
calling him Tommy, and it's clear, and it's, this person is four feet smaller than Tommy, though. She doesn't check. Yes. She just takes no. off those clothes, and yeah, she gets it. Hey there, Tommy. Yeah, yeah exactly. And he, yeah, he <laughs> sort of, it's not quite a pitchfork. He's sort of, it's like a, a bent hoe. Not not the girl. <laughs> the weapon. <laughs> I don't know what that is, uh, but they have a lot of implements, which is great. Um, yeah. There's another creepy bit, this to really ramp up that incestual uh, tone, where the grandpa sees his granddaughter, Vera. And oh, yeah. Says, you look tempting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tempting young lady. But no yeah, one reacts accordingly. I was literally looking no. around the screen wondering, is anyone going to say anything? But it's just yeah. allowed boundaries. Yeah. Please. I know. That's the thing. And then the boyfriend's like, get off her. Oh, it's your grandpa. Oops. Made a bad impression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. And to double down on that, the lack of boundaries, then because Tommy bursts into his sister making yes. out with her boyfriend and attacks him in a jealous rage. Yes, that's all very strange. That's true, actually. Yeah, that's a bit of a weird moment. Because apart from mm. that, he hasn't really done that. But then, but then he's not the one who kills him. So. No, well, I love that you've just completely blown my mind because I totally didn't clock that it was absolutely her all the way through. That's wonderful. Well, that's, what's quite funny is I didn't see the twist coming and I was like, it's such well, a crappy they... movie. I was like, why did I not guess? Of course it's the bloody mother. <laughs> yeah, stupid. Uh, I like I like the shovel through the head with the boyfriend though. Obviously, with a low mm. budget though, it's all done with cuts, so you never see yeah. it actually happening. It's back and forth, back and forth, and yeah, then it's just exactly. in there. Yeah, yeah, perfect. The, you know the the scene where we do see a lady getting branded? I thought that yeah. was Nora. No, it's the a blonde lady. Oh but... no, I don't I didn't think it was her. I thought it was just some some, just some random new... hapless victim. Fine. <laughs> Fine, I'll 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 buy that. Uh but it takes <laughs> us to the Halloween party. And yeah, the stripper. Now I'm not I'm not shaming the profession, but it doesn't feel like the right in- <laughs> environment. There are kids there. I know, that's very, very weird. But the weirder bit I thought was the stand up comic outside. What is that? He wasn't booked. He just seemed to be a guest at the party. Yeah. And I was thinking, is this like have the have they managed to hire someone who's actually kind of like a little bit known and that's why they've given him this space that's to what just I do a kind of and they did this whole th- he pretends to be a turkey. The whole thing is <laughs> yes. just uncomfortable, isn't it? It's really weird. It goes on for much longer than you'd expect. Yeah, it's minutes. It's about mm-hmm. four or five minutes. And yeah. it's, it's because I don't understand why the people are there watching it instead of going inside. Because they're not queuing. They're not having a fag. They're no, just no. watching his show. Yep, yep. And he's like, hey, guys, why aren't you watching The Stripper? And then launches into his little stand-up. <laughs> it's it's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, when she has found her mutilated boyfriend, as you say, she goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, this must have been Tommy and my brother. And she's all yeah. right about it. She's like, I'm going to go and tell him off because <laughs> it's a family yeah. matter. She says it's a family matter. It's a family matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still goes to the party and all that as well. Yeah. And so, well, she swings by the satanic barn as well. And that's oh, yes. another thing. The family are all really blasé about Grandad's cult because they yes. never walk in and go, oh my God, what is happening in here? <laughs> it's just, it's really like, it's just always, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Can I just have a yeah. word with Tommy? Yeah, this is a bit icky, but I just need to get in and get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but then we've got, yeah, it's the big climax, I suppose, at the uh, the party. Um, yeah. And my favourite sequence has to be the uh, the lady, <laughs> the slightly older lady who's come onto the cop in the bathroom with her um, corset. Yeah, that's that's very weird. <laughs> I thought that was the mum at first. Mm-hmm. Nope. Just... When she walked in. Just a very random, like, much older woman. Yep. Dressed sort of, yeah, like, very... Like Little House on the Prairie style, do si do dress. And then she really, I mean, that's why it has this sort of soft porn thing as well, because she's like, um, is that a real gun? Can I pull your trigger yes, later? There's lots it's all of that. very, like, full on, like. But I think yeah. uh, quite clever of the killer to um, silence her before stabbing her, because she says, can you do up my corset? Nice and, uh, I think she says, hard and tight, like the boys like it. And uh, mm. yeah, he. <laughs> He pulls it so tight that she passes out. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, but not before you like you see her like popping out of her the front of, of her course. corset. Of course, of course, you gotta get yeah. that in. You gotta get that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and then I think in a wonderfully hilarious moment when the girls come in and they see just the dead lady propped up and they just get, and they don't even check on her. Her eyes are open. Yeah, and they're like, oh, some people just can't handle their drink. Yes. <laughs> yeah, then Beth gets it round the neck. Dragged into the closet. And that's when Vera yeah. finally asks the lady for help. Yeah. 
And then because the woman's been stabbed in the back, she has to lean forward slowly, slowly to reveal <laughs> her stabbed back. But she can't fall off because she's a real live person and that would hurt. Yes. <laughs> and so then the, the fight we have between the two, the two devils. So that is the mother mm. and the grandfather. So actually... Correct. W- well, then I was complaining that she just doesn't react enough that he, you know, impregnated her. No, no, yeah. Yeah. But I you know, suppose... she's angry. Her <laughs> anger can come out there. Yeah. Killing her dad on the stairs. Finally. In a very, this is how we do it. We do two strikes and then I move up two steps and then we do two strikes and I move up two steps. <laughs> to, kind of a way. To the loose banister. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That just opens like, <laughs> like yeah. a gate. Yeah, like saloon doors. Perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah, and this is another thing. So if it's so easy for the granddad to pass mm-hmm. on the mark or to give over the power of the devil because obviously as he's dying he just touches the uh the cop ralph Ra- 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 I can't even roger remember. roger thank you and roger. uh yeah he sort of just puts it onto his forehead and yeah. immediately it's passed yeah. on so it begs the question why all the ceremony <laughs> yeah why not do it to everybody <laughs> yes and everybody's they're all in why the branding um yeah you think you have to do something else like make him drink some blood yeah. or Give him the give him the pentagram like he did for yeah, little Tommy. Read the rights. Also, even when he did it for Tommy, mm. it didn't hundred percent work because when it came to it, Tommy couldn't go through with <laughs> hurting tr- his sister. That's... So it doesn't actually. <laughs> it basically well well, it dies out with the grandpa. I think. Yeah, it's it's that's what I think happened. It's a flawed magic, um, and then yeah, it's it's the end, and we get the reveal that it, I still can't believe that my head said to me, "Oh, she just." threw on a costume at the end to kill him but i kind of want to i said i'd never watch it again but now i kind of want to watch it again <laughs> to go through it because it makes a lot more sense to me now not and that's i'm saying that very you know loosely sense because the plot and narrative in this is is uh yeah, pretty reaching yeah. uh yeah oh right wonderful and she dies on her husband's grave in a lovely tender yeah. moment but then yeah roger's leading the cult Ready for Hacker yeah, Lantern 2. Exactly, exactly. Wow. <laughs> well, that's that was wonderful. <laughs> I'm pretty glad. Are you, are you glad you watched it? You know what? I stuck it out. You did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, there is something very, like, charming and reassuring about how sort of stilted it is. I kind of... I, I sort of got quite into the rhythm of it because they don't, nobody talks like real people interact. So <laughs> you sort of get a bit like... Um, hypnotized by that yes i think yeah everybody's so awkward yeah and i think it, the pacing for one of these sort of films is actually pretty good because they don't dwell on narrative or tying up any loose yeah, ends yeah. It, it, it just That's true it, there's always something to be entertained by even when the dialogue is shitty the way it's been delivered is entertaining <laughs> yeah and also i got i just i suppose i always get a bit into the thing of thinking what were the at what point were the actors realizing that what they were doing was just going to go straight to VHS? I love that. Like, I think that too. Or when you know you're looking at your your sides for that day and kind of going, yeah, right. Then this is a uh, this is my yeah. job today. Cool. And there's always a few bits where they were obviously allowed to ad libs. So they'd be like, and like Roger going, "Hey, where's Beth?" <laughs> well, you know, Roger, she's just inside. And then she'd be like, um, "Anyway, I better get back to work." And she'd sort of say it in a really normal way because obviously right. that was the bit they were allowed to ad lib, like. Your character could just say something flippant at the end. Right, and, so and that's think, where oh, the naturalistic dialogue comes. like a real comes. person talking, yes. yeah. And there's, <laughs> there's actually even a couple of moments where someone fluffs a line and they just keep it in. There's a bit where the dad, before he's killed at the beginning, he's opening the fridge. Oh, the dad is so bad. He's terrible in his lines. It's wow. incredible. I think he might be the worst, yes, actually. Yes, definitely. The and that, yeah, we, thank goodness for, we don't have to deal with him for too long. But he literally opens the fridge in the middle of a line. And because the fridge makes a big noise, he then starts the line again and then closes it. But they kept oh, it that's in. Brilliant. It's a wonderful. I wish I'd written well, down I, what the line is. It's something like, I don't you think... need to tell your father. You need to tell your father that <laughs> it's brilliant. Wow. I think, um, I think you know, time and budget was mm. stretched. Yeah. So I think, you know, it was like, we have to just get this, guys. We have one take. Yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not many <laughs> takes on that one. Wow. It's wonderful. Do you have any final thoughts or anything you want to say about Hacker Lantern? Um, well, this is a slight non... Not direct about Hacker Lantern, but I did wonder if during your podcasting you've watched a film 
and then you think actually this one I really think people should watch or if they're usually like like Hacker if Hacker Lantern is usually I think yes yeah well in the in, <laughs> in the first season that I did I I made sure they were just truly god awful B movies uh and yeah. it was like the best worst horrors you know there's ones that are yeah. so because this is an unintentional comedy it's that sort of thing when it's played earnestly yeah. but that's hilarious because when they try and be Which funny like it's that. not it's not it's not funny but then i i've just i've opened it up a bit more to N- not great horror films from the 80s and 90s, but the, uh, slightly more budget and studio films just because they don't get a lot of light. There's a lot that were made. Like I just had, uh, just did one a few weeks ago called The Fun House, which is by Toby Hooper, who did Texas Chainsaw. And it's it's definitely ah. a, a trashy movie, but it is a universal budget film. And it's really good and it's full of atmosphere Funhouse. and it's stupid and... Uh, sleazy and not this kind of sleazy, you know, more more legal. Uh, but it's it's just so much fun. And also, I a lot of these I saw, like there's a film called Demonic Toys that I used to rent a lot when I was a kid from the VHS store and I hadn't seen it in over 20 years. And I popped it on and it's it's just so bad. It's just so awful. But it, it's <laughs> enjoyable. And I, I there's a lot that I revisit and I don't know how I got through them when I was a kid. <laughs> and or how I got to okay. the end. Demonic Toys, Fun House. <laughs> the, yeah, Demonic Toys, The Fun House. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both worth it. Both on very different ends of the spectrum, I'd say, in quality. But yeah, it's great. I do love those kind of things. I mean, sometimes as well, if because I even though I love scary films, I sometimes don't enjoy the act of watching it for the first time because I am actually really scared. So I right. often have my fingers in my ears and I'm like looking through cracks in my fingers and... Sometimes when you watch a film, a scary film, and then you realise it's actually really rubbish, it's actually quite nice because yes. you like relax you and you're like, oh, it. this is terrible. I can just enjoy this now. Do you remember years ago there was one where it was like there was a killer that was phoning a phone box? Do you remember that? It was so bad. It just didn't work as an idea at all. And actually, I think we watched the latest Candyman. Yes. And that's a bit like that as well, where it's kind of enjoyable, but it's not actually that, you're not actually on the edge of your seat. You're yeah. like, and some of it's a bit silly. Yeah. And it's quite fun. That's quite fun in its own space. Yeah. What, <laughs> what, it, it, because there's so many subgenres, like you've got alien films, you've mm. got ghost films, witch mm. films, occult, uh, cannibals, mm. whatever. What, it, what's the sort of subgenre that scares you most? Mm, in terms, I mean, I always, I do think things that deal with the occult, have got a fundamental not like chill. <laughs> not Hacko Lantern, though. But, you know, The Exorcist, for example. Demonic stuff. Just, it, uh, there is a feel that you've opened a box that is genuinely like the grown-up stuff, mm-hmm. you know, because of the weight of it and culturally, where, it, where it, you know, how it makes people feel. Mm-hmm. So I think that always feels like fundamentally quite creepy. Um, but I like ones that are like a little bit fantasy, like like you know the witch. Yeah, you know, oh, that one with um one of my absolute favourites, Robert Eggers. Yeah, isn't it brilliant? It's so good. It's a masterclass that one because it's the mounting yeah. tension. You know, it doesn't rely yes. on jump scares or anything no. sort of gross or silly. It's the just the gradual. Um, you just feel doom and you know exactly. something is up for this whole and you just go through the whole thing and it so builds good. and builds and builds. It's an absolute masterclass. I is. for me, I I'm a sucker for fan footage, whether it's the Blair Witch Project or Paranormal oh, Activity. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. It even if it's the Have you seen Wreck as well? Wreck's yes. really good. Oh my god, that's terrifying. And I think it is. it is just that POV style. It just it, it takes you into it. It's a bit more immersive and no matter how bad the quality of a a fan footage there's something that always gets me i just uh it feels like it could be real yeah like i mean to be honest like the blair witch was groundbreaking when it came Mm -hmm. out there hadn't been anything that was like that and one of my girlfriends went to see it not knowing it was a film so she thought it was genuine she she was abroad and went to see it and so she was absolutely terrified she was like thought it was all real stuff (laughs) but um that was really groundbreaking. Paranormal Activity, I think, is really good until you sort of see what the thing is. I like it when it's all the build-up. Like the bits where in the middle of the night people just stand up and just stand by the door for like it's five terrifying. hours. And they're like, what is it I'm doing in that footage? Why did I right. do that in the night? That's right. really creepy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Wreck, the original one, when I saw that, there's a jump scare near the end, which oh I jumped God. so much I pulled a muscle in my leg. <laughs> 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 That's amazing. I think yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, well. yeah. I think I know which <laughs> moment. Yeah, Blair Witch mm. for me was, as you say, it was groundbreaking. But I, it was 
it was formative as well because as you say it hadn't been done and i went in not re- it was the early days of the internet and they'd set it up like it was this yeah. real case you could go on the site yeah. and see police files and i went in not i don't think i fully believed it was going to be a snuff movie like f- real footage but i wasn't sure what was happening and what was real and what wasn't and yeah. i don't think the funny thing is now because when people watch it now who haven't seen it it pales in comparison to some of the the great fan footage that's come since because right. it, it, the thing is you can't replicate what happened back then because unless you were yeah. there in 1999 not mm. knowing you couldn't go yeah, on yeah. the internet and check if films were real now you can't pretend a fan footage is real anymore because the, the gig is up there's no yeah. way you could convince someone of that but yeah. it was a one of a kind and it can never happen again because it yeah. was the beginning of the internet and it was the first of its kind and that yeah. for me still whenever i watch it it still elicits the exact same response from me because it takes me back like i've got i've got a little yeah. log of myself in that time and it terrifies me so i'll watch it with someone who thinks it's absolutely shit but i haven't seen it again oh it's Since it's then. still just a masterpiece i think yeah yeah it's wonderful but then yeah stuff like that but then i do love to these sort of films these 80s trash films it's the stuff i grew up on and there's something just really enjoyable about it and it's the effort i think that and that's what i was saying about the fact that they you know everyone on that set was probably thinking they're making a good film or at least hoping. <laughs> that's true that's true no i love all that kind of stuff as well and but i think i think actually if i talk about my favorite genre it's any, it's any of the films where actually it's the more carefully constructed i think things like the babadook and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pan's Labyrinth and Don't Look Now, where it's all so careful. And when you watch it yeah. again, you see more and more things, layers that were mm-hmm. put in there to to make sure that you were you were led in the right direction yeah. for getting through all the the twists and turns. And I I think those kind of films really, I love that feeling. I love yeah. the craft of what how much effort has gone into making sure my experience. I I do everything I'm supposed to as a viewer. I like yeah. all that. And I think we're in a really good place for horror with that because I think, you know, um, it's been given a chance finally. It's back in a place of mm. respect because of films like The Babadook and The Witch and Hereditary. And so I really love where we are at the moment. But it won't yeah. stop me going back because the thing is, I haven't seen them all. That Every time I think I know every 80s trash horror film, 10 minutes <laughs> unearthed and there's a new Blu-ray. Amazing. Um, but listen, thank you so, so much. And remind us again when your when the live album is out. Uh, the live album's out, I think it's November the 18th, and um, yeah, uh, I think that's the main thing I'm doing. I'm mixing another album as well for the springtime, like a new album, but uh, the live album has been a really lovely project actually, because it really captures a very special thing I got up to, and I, I you know, with loads of lovely people working with me, so yeah. It's a nice thing. Yeah, you get to immortalise it. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you very, very much, Sophie ellis Bexer, and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> and there we have it thank you so much to sophie ellis bexter it's always lovely when i get to show a horror fan the bowels of the genre such a brilliant guest thank you once again uh next week i'm actually taking a very brief hiatus and there will be no new episode however i'm not just gonna leave you hungry i will be dropping an episode previously unreleased on the main feed and it's a good one. Uh, then I'll be back to the new regular schedule the following week. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch in the meantime, you can find us on Twitter and Letterboxd. It's Stevie's Brain Rot. On Instagram and Facebook, it's Brain Rot Pod. You can email the pod. The address is steviesbrainrot at gmail.com. All these links are also down below in the show notes. All right, you stinking rotters. Happy bloody Halloween. Toodles. Toodles. <laughs>